today we're doing coordination and time-based programming. So I'm going to not be as detailed because this is all about programming the data into the controllers as opposed to a class on coordination. Um, a lot of a lot of new um, novice people, so I don't want this to get I don't want this to go off the rails like a coordination class can. So I'm going to go over the kind of the basics, the generics. I, I touched on it a little bit last week. I'm going to review that and then uh, I'll show you how to implement the coordination data into the control because that's that's pretty critical and a lot of times that doesn't happen. Um, I just want to follow up with uh, a couple of questions I had from last week, which we did uh, ring structures and how that goes. So I'm just going to show it to you on the controller. So in the controller, if I go to ring structure, so I was using this sequence right here, right? So we're using all the phases, uh, one, five, two and five, one and six, three and eight, four and seven, and we have a nine exclusive head. All right, so a couple of the questions I have with the ring structure, people were watching the video and getting a little bit of confused because they were looking at what was already programmed in there. Um, I, I don't know if I was uh, specific in this, but I'm gonna say it right now. The way the, the Siemens, pro you'll hear me refer to the Siemens processor, the Siemens processor. Basically that's the brain inside of the controller that it's always looking, and this goes back to when I said default, the controller for default data. Um, it's always looking for data to be in, installed every place that it could be, whether it's a, even if it's all zeros. It hates to see blanks. Um, so it's going to see a data increment in there. For people that get a lot of, um, we used to get CRC errors, sometimes you get diagnostic errors that generally can go back to, it's not seeing a bit of programming, so it doesn't know what to do with it. Um, in regards to the uh, ring structure, the, the Siemens processor wants to see it always filled out completely. So if you'll notice, like I, when I say filled out completely, if you look on the screen, right, my screen's up, right? Um, you'll see where it says phase one, ring one, two next, and then compatible phases are five and six. And as I scroll down, it goes 219, 314, <laughs> 411, 526, 627. You should be in my class. I got people showing up here who should be in my class. Great job, going up. Yeah. It's amazing the ones that need the class the most don't watch the video. I'm shocked at that all the time. A little levity this morning. Um, 825913. All right. So that's what I mean by it's, it's completely filled out or it's populated. So a couple of two people asked me the same questions. If you're not using a phase, so if you have phase one turned off, technically, right, I go enter. That's what I mean by zeroed out in the ring structure. So if I'm not using phases one, three, five, and seven, which are all my left turns over here, I could literally put in two, four, six, and eight. So it would go, so it would be phase two, next would be four, and then when you go to four, next would be two. So, if, uh, oh, I took, it, I took the ring structure down. Okay. Um, technically that'll work, but I don't, I never, we never advise that to do that because even though you have phases turned off that you're not using, the processor is still looking at all this data in there. So it's still looking at phases one through eight because it's always waiting for it to be turned on. And then when it's turned on, it's going to activate it. So if it sees things zeroed out, I've seen very unique things happen. And the way we ended up correcting it was we defaulted the ring structure and that corrected the problem. The only time that we'll zero things out in the ring structure is if we're using a very unique sequence where it may go for whatever it, it may go one phase one, four, five, two, we, we totally go out of order, then we may start zeroing um, phases out. But 
that's maybe 1% of the controllers that we program in New England. So my advice, best pra- it's one of those best practices things, is leave everything populated. And every time you make a change, you hit, you hit the F key and it'll say E to accept, All right? We populate everything in the ring structure and then we go to phase data, initialize, and here we just simply turn off what we're not using. So if we weren't using one, three, five, and seven, I would just turn it off there. And that's all I need to do. So I'm still populated in the ring structure. I build it in my ring structure. I just turn the phases off under initialization. So that's my little message for today. So never take out ring structure if you don't have to. Um, more than likely, if you have to take it out, you're probably going to be talking with me or somebody here at OSHA State anyway, um, because that's usually a challenge in sequence. So um, those are just a couple of things. Looking at my notes here. Um, like I said, that question came over three or four times. Somebody was just asking about it yesterday. So I thought I'd throw it in, in there. Okay. Uh, uh, and this us back to where I'm at. Okay. Now we're going to get going with coordination. So I'm going to start off with kind of what I covered um, last week. And let me get to my, let me just go on full video here. Okay. All right. So then I got my little pointer here. So basically we have in coordination, right? <clears throat> so we have coordination. Um, you'll see the term cycle split and offset. So coordination, so our cycle, right, is the length of time. So right here, our cycle is 100 seconds. So what that's saying is, in 100 seconds, we have to service all the time, all the phases in my cycle. So in my cycle, I'm using phases again. One and five, two and six, nine, three and seven, four and eight. So I have to break out 100 seconds, so every phase, has enough time to be cycled in it. We don't have to do, we don't have to break it out. It's not a hundred seconds per all eight phases. It's a hundred seconds per ring. So if you look on my chart right here, I have ring one and ring two. Ring one demonstrates phases one, two, nine, three, and four, because you'll see them over here, one slash, two slash six, nine, three slash seven, four slash eight. Okay, this is ring one. So it's one, two, nine, three, four, just like we covered in ring structure last week. And then ring two is five, six. We don't have a nine because it's up in ring. It's up in ring one. And then seven and eight. So again, one, two, nine, three, four, five, six, nothing, seven, eight. So the way the 100 seconds breaks out is it's 100 seconds for ring one. That's the key. One other thing, one other thing with the coordinator in the in all the CMZ pack controllers, the coordinator bases everything what it sees in ring one. So basically, if you notice, I have five phases in ring one and four in ring two. I have to either have equal amount of phases in ring one and ring two, or more phases in ring one than ring two. In some situations, you might have seen where you'll notice that um, five, six, seven, or eight, sometimes you'll see it actually show up in the controller in ring one, and then ring two might be phases two and four. It's because I need to have the most amount of phases in my ring one. So I can just reverse them. The controller doesn't know any, di- the, the traffic doesn't know any difference. It's what the controller, the, the core, what we refer to as the coordinator in the controller. It's what it's looking for. And it always likes to key everything off of phase one. So sometimes we may not have a phase one and just have a phase five. We may end up putting what we call a dummy phase in one. So all it is is just time. We don't turn phase one on. We just put timing in there. And that just helps balance out the coordinator because it wants to key everything off of phase one. Okay. So again, 100 seconds. So if you look here, the 100 seconds, 15 plus 25 is 40. I'm sorry. 
15 plus 25 is 40. 40 and 25 is 65. 65 and 15 is 80. 80 and 20 equals 100. There's my 100 seconds. If you notice in ring two, I'm 25 seconds less because I don't have a nine. I only have 75 seconds, but that's okay because the coordinator is only basing it off of ring one, okay? So the cycle length is looking at ring one. That has to equal 100 seconds. Now, these are referred to as phase splits. So that was our cycle. Now we have our split. So our phase split, you can see this, refers to the minimum, it's, it's, a, it's a mathematical equation, okay? So our phase split is comprised of our minimum green time, our yellow time, and our red time. So if you look right here in the controller, which I have programmed, it's six seconds of min green, four seconds of yellow, two seconds of red. Six, four, and two equals 12. So what that's saying is my, my phase split in this case, phase one has to be greater than 12 seconds. So we have 15 seconds, so we're good. Um, my phase nine head, I don't have mint green and yellow. Well, I have a yellow, but I'm, I'm timing it with the peg clearance like we do with that little uh, two mode that we do. But I have a walk, a peg clearance, and a red. So the sum total of that, three plus five plus 16, is 24 seconds. Now, you'll notice over here, I have minimum requirements, 13, 25, and I have this little thing over here that says plus one second. When we're doing pen phasing, a lot of times the coordinator wants you to add one second to whatever our pen time is. So our pen split time is 24 seconds, plus one is 25, that's why I have a 25. And what that one second is, is a one second buffer for the controller to make its next decision on. It's something we're hoping in future generations that they'll finally be able to maybe take that one second out. Now that we have the Linux processor in there, everything works a lot quicker, it's a lot snappier. We might be able to eliminate that. So a lot of times when you see plans or you'll see it add up to 24 seconds and then you look in the split and it says 25, it's because we need that extra second. Um, with vehicle times, you'll see um, it's 12 seconds, and you notice I put a 13. So the lowest number I can get in a phase split for a vehicle is 11, 12 seconds. And that's because, again, that, that processor is just built around that. I can put one second of green time, and it's still going to make me put in that 12 seconds. Um, Again, it's just something from the older, the coordinator, the way it's designed, it wants to see a minimum amount of time in there. Where, again, we're in 5.0, we're trying to work around that so that way we don't have to waste time because those seconds become critical in a coordinated phase. So for the exercise today, we're meeting all our minimum requirements so we don't have a problem. So if you look over here, I have 15, 25, 25, 15, 20. So I'm fine. I've hit all my phase split requirements. Now, the example I gave last week, I'll go back into the controller. So if you look down at the lower screen, you'll see them in manual 111, and that cycle timer is counting down. So I'm in coordination right now. All right. So I'm running coordinated. If you look under. Um, I'm running coordination right now. And then what would happen is if I go, this is this is how we get thrown out of coordination, is we go into our phase time and something happens with the detection, who the heck knows, phase one. They want to put 20 seconds in that phase one. And instantly it says bad plan free. So what happens is if you look at my screen now. Going by my formula of green plus yellow plus red, I now have 20 seconds plus four seconds of yellow and four seconds of red, which gives me a total of 26 seconds. So basically it's saying I need 26 seconds of phase split time for one when I only have 15. 
So instantaneously, that's how we throw that thing out of coordination. So you've got to be careful when you're adjusting times. <clears throat> I'll put it back to six seconds. You'll see the timer in the bottom right. It'll start counting down, and it's going to get itself back into step again. So that's when we say, um, that's when you get bad. That's a violation of the cycle length. Basically, we have too much time in there, and we can't fit it in the cycle length. Okay. So that's the cycle. Now you know how we come up with phase splits. And then the last thing is the offset. So I just do an offset in here. Go back to the full screen, sorry. So I put in here an offset of 15 seconds. Okay. And all that means is basically the coordinated phase <clears throat> is going to start here. And we'll say I will say at the zero point, intersect two will start. 15 seconds later because the ideal is the idea is to get the queue of traffic through here on green traveling at 35 miles an hour and then when it gets to this intersection this intersection just goes green so now i get green to green to green all the way down my arterial so the way we have to do that is we have to offset the start of the coordinated phase at each sequential intersection down the road if i have a zero offset at both intersections they both go green at the same time. So now I potentially, if it takes 15 seconds to get there, I just lost 15 seconds out of the 25 of green time over here. So basically nothing, you might have a couple of cars in there, but the, the queue or the platoon, the big group of people that's queued up at the light here, basically will make it all the way through. Um, there's formulas to uh, come up with that. A lot of times we'll just stand there on the side. If you could just simply stand there and when this goes green or you can just find a car with a stopwatch and time how long it takes to get from intersection one to two, you can come up with a pretty decent offset and kind of work your way down, um, down the corridor. So that basically covers the three main components. Our cycle, which is based on ring one, our split. So that's the timing in the phase and what it's comprised of. And then the offset, is the timing of when we start the coordinator in each sequential intersection, okay? All right. So now the way this whole thing works is, and I'll get into this, I'm gonna go over this and then we'll go through the program so you'll understand. There's a lot that goes into coordination, a lot of different modes, um, a lot of different ways that we can manipulate the timing, how we extend the timing, how we give uh, extra, what we call green time, so green time is the key when, when uh, engineers and consultants are talking about coordination. We try to maximize and use green time the best that we can. We don't want to waste any. So when, we're, we, when they refer to wasting green time, that means that phases are gapping out. So I may have, um, I may be allocating 20 seconds on four and eight. But we monitor four and eight, and there's a whole bunch of different, there's a lot, you'll hear things, uh, you talk about SPMs, signal performance measures, um, left turn moving counts, things of that nature. That helps us, that helps us monitor coordinated arterials, and it tells us how efficient our timing is. So if I have 20 seconds on four and eight, but four to five times four and eight gaps out, that means it leaves earlier than the 20 seconds instead of having, like I said, if you figure two cars a second, so you could do a maximum of 20 cars on four and eight. If we only get 12 cars every time, that means that we have too much, we have extra time in four and eight. We may have five at four extra seconds. So that four extra seconds could be taken out of there and given to the main street or maybe another left turn. So we want, ideally you want to, you want to create your coordination so that everything is potentially maxing out. So you're trying to get those numbers to fit the maximum amount of cars that go through talking about left turns and side streets. It's hot. We, we're not going to control the main line. That's where we want all the unused time to go to. So that way we don't have, we just don't throw a ton of time at left turns and side streets. We try to match it up to whatever the vehicle demand is. So, you may say, ah, it's 20 seconds. What's the difference between 20 seconds and 17 seconds? Well, that's three seconds. So that's six cars on another approach. And if we have to fit in the constraints of a 100 second cycle length, 
a lot of times you see 80 second cycle lengths. Those three seconds are actually critical to balancing out how the arterial works. So the way we can do that is a couple of different things is we can either start what they call the beginning of Main Street or the end of Main Street. And that's a setting in the mode that I'm going to go over. So the beginning of the Main Street, we start that timer down there. At the end, we start at the end of green or when the yellow comes up. So that's two different one. That's two different ways we do it. It's just different modes of coordination that that they want to do. Um, and then what we refer to as the coordinated phase. So typically the coordinated phase is your main street phase. So in this scenario, two and six is our main street phase or our heaviest demand where we have the most traffic. So basically the most amount of time is going to go to two and six. All our unused time is going to go back to main to typically to the main street. I'll discuss in a minute where we can actually use that time on some of the non-coordinated phases. So I'll go over in the settings where you can make these the coordinated phase. And what happens during the coordinated phase is we run something called non-actuated, right? That means that the loop detection is not working. And these are when you see all the problems when you don't have a well-timed corridor for coordination. So what happens is Typically, the morning rush hour will run coordinated seven to nine, and they'll allot. So, in this case, we're allotting 25 seconds to the main street. If the pet doesn't come in, that pet time can be added to the main street. So, that's 50 seconds. So, that means you're getting 50 seconds of green, yellow, and red time. So, in, if you subtract the six seconds of yellow and red, I get 44 seconds of green time. So whether there's one car or 200 cars there, I'm sitting in that main street for 44 seconds because we've shut off the detection and it's holding in main street green. And that's designed on purpose because we're trying to maximize the amount of cars. So 44 seconds of green times two is 88 vehicles can get there. So almost hundred cars can get through each cycle. That's a pretty good clip of cars um, moving through. So the problem is if coordination lengths aren't proper so if, let's say i have a 120 second length that 20 seconds may go onto the main street now you're talking 64 seconds that's that could be too long if we're not running it when the vehicle demand is there so typically you'll see that what they call the am peak or the pm peak am peak is roughly six in the morning to nine or ten in the morning pm peak is usually three o'clock in the afternoon to seven o'clock in the evening so that's when everybody's going to work and then in the afternoon, everybody's coming home from work. That's when we have, that's when the roadways are maximized with traffic. We all get stuck in it every day. So that's when we're focusing all our efforts on the main line to try to move traffic through. And sometimes it's on the side street. Again, it all depends on the intersection. So the mistakes you'll see sometimes and the complaints that you guys all will get at the municipal level is at, at 8.30 in the morning, nobody complains because traffic is saturated, meaning it's full of cars everywhere. But then at 930, when everybody's at work, we're still running that cycle length. We're still running in coordination. And now people are just sitting on the main, on the side street watching no cars go by. Very frustrating. You get all these calls. The cycles are stuck. Nothing is cycling. We're just running in coordination. And then what happens? They go out. They shut the coordination off. And, and that's where we're at. So it's, in, it's important to balance your coordination, your time of day, when it operates, to only when it needs to be on. And when I go through time clock, we can turn that thing on and off all day long. Some people like to turn it on at six and shut it off six in the morning, turn it off at seven at night. <clears throat> Unless you're in a bigger city or outside of Boston, you know, where you're going to have that vehicle demand, that's not the best idea. Or at least drop your cycle lengths. Maybe you, at 10 o'clock, we go on to an 80 second cycle length. Now there's less time. So, so that's kind of the general overview on how coordination works. Um, Oh, one last thing. So there's basically two basic modes that we use. You'll see most. One is called permissive. One is called yield. All right. Yield coordination, permissive coordination. OK. What permissive coordination does is basically it all the unused time. So if this only times 10 seconds, that times 10 seconds, that's an extra 10 plus 5, 15 seconds. Any unused time goes back to the main street. 
And the way it does that is do something called force loss. So in permissive, basically what it does, when it times down to 25 seconds, it says, okay, do I have a call? Do I have a peg call to nine? It looks in the controller, there's no peg call to nine. So what the coordinated phase will say, okay, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna stay in two and six, and I'm gonna dump this 25 seconds back into two and six. So now we're there for 50 seconds. Towards the towards the end, now it's it opens up what they call a um, the permissive window, and it says, all right, is there any calls on three and seven? If there's no calls on three and seven, it'll stay in two and six. So now it gives that 15 seconds back to two and six. Then they'll say, okay, is there a call on four and eight? Now I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna go service four and eight. Then it's gonna to look to see if we have one and five. It'll go to one and five and then get back to two and six. So if there's, it's gonna take any unused time and it's gonna leave it in two and six. That's why at 9.30 in the morning, when I don't have a lot of traffic out there, you can see this 25 seconds grow up to like 60 seconds, 65 seconds. And that, that's a problem. That's when coordination gets a bad rap and everybody's like, the coordination is terrible. It doesn't run right. It's not that it doesn't run right. It's just not set right in the time of day. We need to turn that off or go to a, a shorter cycle. In the mode of yield coordination, it does the opposite. So what it does is towards the end of the green, what it does is it opens up all the permissive windows and says, hey, who has vehicle demand? So instantaneously, it'll leave. And if there's nobody on three and seven, it'll go right to four and eight. And what it can do is it can give this extra time to four and eight if there's vehicle demand there. And then same thing, it can go back to one and five. And then if there's no other demand left, it'll go back to two and six. But ideally, the gen a general simple way to look at it is permissive coordination gives all the extra green time to the main street, the coordinated phase. Yield coordination gives the extra time to the side shoots or your non-coordinated phase, which are left turns in your side shoots. So that's basically the simplest way that I can explain coordination. I think that's enough for what we're doing today. Um, but you kind of have an idea of what's going on um, when it's out there. And a lot of people are trying to, um, you know, I talk to contractors and some municipal folks that like to, you know, they're learning to adjust their own <clears throat> coordination plans, which are fine. So again, if you know that this is out, say you know that the left turns are heavier than the third, there's nothing wrong with taking a few seconds from here and just putting it over there. I want to take four seconds here and add it there. That's fine. That becomes 16, that becomes 19. As long as it doesn't throw off the 100 second cycle line, you just stole seconds here and gave it there. That's what the term stealing seconds means. So again, it's we're, we're talking about seconds, which is a small increment of time, but I can't express how important those seconds are when they're limited in the cycle length. Okay? So now I'll explain how to get all this information into the controller. Okay? So now I'm going to go to my controller. So you only see half of me. Anybody have questions? Any questions coming up, Wayne? Negative. All right. I know this is a lot, but okay. So the first thing is the setup mode. Okay. This is this is one of the most critical places in coordination. Um, this is where basically we turn it on and off. So if you look right now, you'll see it down below in the controller screen. It'll say manual 111, 25, 24, 23. Okay, I'm in manual operation only because I don't have the time of day set up, so I'm just forcing it. I have three op I have three options here. I can run it in free, auto, which is by time of day, so the time clock is controlling when it goes on and off, or manual. Typically, we use manual when I, I use manual when I want to test something. So if I set up a program, cycle two, cycle three, I want to see how it runs. I'll just manually I'll put a two in. And then I can control what cycle I'm testing just to see how it works with traffic. If I put a zero there, boom, my coordination drops out. And now I'm running free operation just on the detection. So now I'm basically um, running vehicles, uh, just off the vehicle demand of the detection. When, when people go out to turn off coordination, 
all Siemens cabinets, majority of Siemens cabinets, all the ones that didn't have this. We have a switch in there. It's a it's a maintenance switch that says free. We get in the middle, I'm never in the middle. That has free, it says free operation, coordination. If you want to turn your coordination off, we ask that you turn it off here in the programming under operation mode and not turn the switch off. Orlando, I know you're listening. Because what happens is if you turn the switch off and that controller, if I have remote access to it, then I can't I can't put it back into coordination unless I physically go out there and hit the switch or you go out there and hit the switch because that's a hard input where we ground the free input. So if you're going to put something into free operation, we ask that you do it here, especially if we have remote access, meaning we can dial into it. That way I can simply go in and just turn it back on and have my coordination go back on and make whatever adjustments that we do. Okay. Um, here's the mode. So if you're looking at the modes right now, you'll see where it says PRM, that's permissive, yield, L, uh, YLD is yield. Um, then you have some other modes that get used very infrequently. So permissive yield, which is a combination of what it says, permissive and yield. Um, POM, I always forget because I don't use these that much. Uh, oh, permissive omit, sequential omit, I think I've used those once in 20 something years. Um, and then the last one is FAC fully actuated. So one thing that we're noticing more and more is you're, you'll notice that you'll see this a lot in when you have uh, pedestrian buttons, when you have concurrent PEDs on the main street, meaning your PEDs come up with your vehicles. So in my diagram, I have a PED that goes here, a PED that goes here. When two and six come on, these PEDs come on. Okay, again, go and review, those are coordinated, those are our concurrent PEDs. When we go into coordination, you'll notice that those walk signs are on, we're what we call resting and walk, all right? So the walk signs will stay on the whole time that we're in the coordinated phase of Main Street Green because they're non-actuated, meaning that it doesn't matter if, any, if there's a PED there, if you hit the button all day, those PEDs are gonna come on. So people think that they have a problem with their ped buttons. They don't, that's happening on purpose. So with the advent of uh, APS buttons, the, the accessible pedestrian buttons that talk, merchants and homeowners and people will complain and this thing just keeps repeating the message. It's very loud, there's nobody out there. We have the ability to turn that off and actually make them actuated. So you have two ways to do that. If you go to run permissive yield coordination, That'll turn off the, the non-actuation or fully actuated mode will turn it off. <clears throat> so depending on what we're doing, we use one or the other, but basically that's a means to turn off um, your peds along the main street. So they are now push button actuated. Our vehicles are still actuated, but our ped buttons are not actuated. Okay. So that's basically our modes. So for my example, we're running um, two and permissive. Um, we can run a couple of different maxes. So there's three options you have is what we call inhibit max. So inhibit max, so let me explain the other two first. So we can run maximum one and maximum two, which are our timing that set in our green timing back in phase data, where we typically have 15 seconds max one green time and then 30 seconds of max two green time. What that means is when I go to coordination, depending on which mode I use, that green time will factor into my coordination of what I'm using. So typically max two is the most common that they like to use. So I'll turn max two on. So as soon as we go to coordination, we start timing max two green and not max one green because it gives us longer max green times that will work with our, uh, our um, face plates. All right, the other one that gets used, this is more of a a preference that we notice by uh, varying consultants is called inhibit max. So basically, we're saying we're inhibiting the max, and we're just going to we're just going to run the, the green time out as we can. The only problem that you have with this is you lose you lose a little bit of control on how much time is given to a certain phase or not. And sometimes you don't care. Sometimes you want to push more time to like a left turn or a side street, but other times you want to have control it. So we can control it a little better with max, one of the max settings, 
and less with the inhibit. Again, it's all in what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, hold on a second. Um, so happy that I invited the guys from District 5 into my class. They, they give me humor during the class. That's, so you see me look down and laugh, it's because I'm laughing at their text. Anyway, uh, correction. So correction, what that does is when we have a preemption event, um, trying to think about sometimes with, with PEDS we can throw, what happens you get, if you get thrown out of coordination or we, we have to get what we call back in step. So we have to do the timing right. So what happens is when we go back out of coordination, we got to get back into it. So these corrections are modes to get us back in quicker or slower. So basically what it is, is you'll see it's dwell, um, max dwell, short way, short way plus, short way two. And most commonly we'll use one of the short ways. So basically what it'll do is it'll take um, in a setting down there, the max dwell, that 20, that's right down below underneath uh, force. It'll say 20. Basically it's taking that time and, either, and adding it. It can add it or subtract it to a cycle length, depending on what cycle I am and get us back into step. So most times we do short way. So it typically will add time to the cycle. So after a preemption event, most commonly, it gets thrown out of coordination. Depending on where it is in the cycle, sometimes that 100 second cycle will go to 120. And then unfortunately, a lot of that unused time goes to the main street. So the main street actually may get like 80 seconds of green until it gets back into step, which usually takes one or two cycles. Um, it's, it's, again, if we use short way plus or short way two, what it can do is either add time or subtract time. So it's just kind of varies on what application you want to do. Um, but typically when you go out of coordination, it takes one to two cycles to get back in step. And a lot of it have, a lot of it is based on when we, where it got interrupted and then when it came back in. Um, again, the offset, I touched on it. So basically it's, it's the beginning of green, like it says there, or the end of green. So beginning of green basically is <clears throat> as soon as we start with green of one second, my, my cycle timer starts going. And essentially my 100 seconds is basically from this point all the way down to the end of, to the end of phase one and five, okay? If I do end of green, my cycle starts here and goes all the way this way. So that's my 100 seconds, okay? So beginning of green, end of green. Typically we use beginning of green with permissive and end of green with yield. Um, you'll know that an intersection is in, a lot of people like to use uh, yield and you'll know you're using yield is because you'll see all the yellows You'll see a lot of the yellow, if your offsets are very closely packed together, if your intersections are close together with smaller offsets, you'll notice they all tend to go yellow at the same time or within five to 10 seconds of each other. So it's, it's sometimes easy to time the intersection at end of green because that's a fixed point. We always know when our yellows are going to come up. When we do beginning, it could get to the green of two and six early. So it's hard to say when that beginning point was without looking at the controller. If you're just looking at the signals, you can always tell end of green because you can see the yellows. They all have to come up. When one goes, they're all going to go right after that. So, um, and, but again, it's, it's personal preference and then some apply better to whatever your arterial is doing. Um, we have a couple of different force off, um, a planned force off or what we call floating. And that typically goes with the permissive because again, with permissive, right? Each phase permissive window opens sequentially. Are you open? Yes or no, service it, close. Are you open? Yes or no, service close. Are you open? Yes or no. So basically that's it. So that, so we float that force off down the row like that. That's what I mean by, by floating a plant. And then with yield, typically we use a cycle. <clears throat> We want that fixed. So basically in cycle, it basically comes down and says, everybody open up. We want it to, we want them all to open. And then we want to see what happens. Who's available where the demand is. Okay. You can use them interchangeably, but typically they're best used one way or the other. Um, and then max well, that goes back to that dwell time of 
uh, of our correction. So typically our default is always 20 seconds. Um, and then the yield period, the yield period by default, we typically use six seconds. And basically in yield, <clears throat> that's what it's saying. It needs to see the vehicle demand within that six seconds to know whether it's gonna go service that phase. If cars show up after that, after that time closed, then it most likely is gonna have to wait until the next cycle. There are situations where you could actually see um, we could leave two and six and go to four. We have no ped, no side, no left turns. We go to four and eight. And if somebody shows up on phase three and nobody is on seven or four, so somebody shows up here, it can actually turn this off and what we call recycle to three and eight. So, so there's, that's the flexibility with yield is we can go to four and eight no demand on four and seven, but a car shows up on three and there's still 10 seconds left, then it'll say, you know what? I'll go back and service three. So it has to be, it has the ability to what we call recycle. So just, to, just again, it, it, it's a little, I just want to kind of touch upon, you know, the, the, the basics or generalities of, of coordination. So, so that's where we would turn everything on and off and, and set our corrections and our offset. And it's critical when you do a coordinated arterial that, the settings be the same all the way down the intersection. Because if you have beginning of green at one, end of green at the other, if you're running max two at one, max two yield, then you don't have consistency in your coordination and you're going to see problems just relegated to how you set it up. So a lot of times we write down what we have on one, we find out what works, and that's the base, that's the, the, the foundation for how we're going to run all the intersections down the Ontario. All right. Um, manual again. This is where I can just control which um, what cycle split and offset I'm running. So the default is one one one. That's how I'm running one one one. I can change it to two two two, and then that'll be my um, what I'm testing cycle two split two offset two. All right. So here's where we're gonna go put in. Um, so here's where it says dial split and level. So again dial is another term for cycle. Um, split is split and then level basically is where we put in either our offset or we can put in our phase split. So we're in dial one, split one. So we'll go to level one, we'll hit enter and this brings up where our, where our offset is. So our pattern, our pattern, ugh, pattern offset time, it's always in seconds. Some controllers, you can do seconds or percentage and you'll see on the plan sometimes that it'll be second slash with a percent sign. Um, that was, I, it's, you see, you saw percentage more traditionally um, years ago. Now it seems like everything comes out in seconds. It's a lot easier. Everybody can just read the seconds. Otherwise you had to do a little bit of math to figure out the, per, you know, what 20% of the cycle length was. Um, so it's just easy buddy, for everybody, but um, some of the controllers do translate it in percentages in case you ever run into that. Um, so in here, basically, all I did was just implement the 15 seconds, right, which is just my offset that I have right over here. Now, my cycle length, I don't put the cycle length in here. I don't enter a value here. That is the sum total of where I'm going to go right now is my phase splits. So if you look, it'll say two phase time and mode parameters. So I put in a two. So here's our phase parameters or our phase splits, what we refer to. So this, if we'll notice, looks just like this screen right here, except I played with that 13 for some reason. Right? So you'll notice where it says, so you'll notice where it says one and five or 15, Two and six are 25, three and five are 15, and four and eight are 20. So I just recreated that off of that screen right there. <clears throat> On the bottom line, you'll notice you get zeros under everything except two and six. So if you look down at the, at the modes, you'll notice that two and six are my coordinated phases. You have to have a coordinated phase in each ring. So in this case, two and six, my main line, right? I have a coordinated phase in there. So I have to put a one under there. 
You used to, in older controllers, we used to have to put sixes under the unused phase. Basically, that we were just omitting them. Um, they've kind of changed it now, where if you don't have, if you have unused phases, you can just leave them as zeros or put them in six. It doesn't really matter. Um, I still do them as six just because it's the way I've always done them, but it, you don't have to do it. <clears throat> There's some a few other functionality in here, so I can actually turn um, recall, min, max, and pen recall on during coordination. So it's another place where I can say, okay, I want pen recall to be on only during coordination, not during my non-coordinated times. Um, these are used um, every once in a while, not very often. Um, dual coordinated phase. You'll see in this, we do have a few intersections out there where we actually, where I say we try, we actually coordinate the main street and the side street. So basically, I have just as much traffic this way as I do this way. So I'm trying to coordinate these signals with this signal and then this approach with an intersection up there. So I can coordinate two and six, four and eight. Very difficult to do. It's a very tough balance, um, but it does have the ability to do it in there. Um, typically in here mode, really, you're just going to put in your, your coordinated phase of one and six. If I'm running a single ring machine where I'm just using phases one, two, three, and four, then I would just have a one under the two or whatever the coordinated phase because I'm not using the other ring. And then lastly, I got to put time in for nine. So I got to scroll over and you'll notice nine is where I have my 25 seconds. So one of the things that you'll see sometimes if, <clears throat> if I'm only running an 80 second cycle length, it can be very difficult to get a full 25 seconds into phase nine ped. So a lot of times what you'll see happen is not letting it, it's not letting me do it I, because I got to do some other programming. Is I mean, you may only see 10 seconds in there or 12 seconds in there. All right, I think I can do 15. Okay, so let me put 15 seconds in there, okay? So what that allows me to do if I go back, so on a pen, I dropped it down. I'm going to go back. Um, crap, I don't want to do that. Deal with me. Um, two. Okay. <clears throat> if I hit H, so you'll notice that I dropped the pen down to 15, but I'm still running coordination. So what that means is all my all my vehicle splits are 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 meeting that now I'm I'm over I'm over because I got 15 seconds and back up. You notice my cycle length went to 105. Okay. Again, that's based on the calculations that I do in my in my splits. Now, if I do a ped call, what's going to happen is I'm going to drop out of coordination. I'm going to service my ped and then come back into coordination. So this is kind of a cheating way to keep the most time that I can for my vehicle demand with the understanding when I go to a ped, I'm going to go out of coordination just like I would a preemption and then come back into coordination. So a lot of times this can be used when you have like a really oversized ped of like 35, 40 seconds. It's almost impossible to fit it into the cycle end. Or you have an exclusive pet that just doesn't get used that much. So they basically, you know, they, they do their counts and they figure out how many times a pet is used per hour. So let's say it only gets used, you know, 10 times per hour. So 10 times out of, you know, 60, 10 out of 60 cycles or 10 out of 50 cycles, it's going to go out of coordination. So that's not too bad. You know, it's whatever you can live with. So that's another way to get around the exclusive pet, but still stay in coordination. I'm going to put that back in. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm back to where I was. And I'm back to 115 seconds.
Uh, let me see. I was playing around with this yesterday and make sure I kept everything turned on. Nine on. Bear with me. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, let's add them up. Let's go back in and add up and see what we got here. So we got. Ba -ba 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 -ba. So 25, 30, 40. 55, so I don't know, 20, 25, 25 is 50, 30 is 80, it's 100. So why is this? I'm just going to re-enter these real quick. I'll have to look into that. I'm not sure why that is. What's adding that extra 15 seconds in there? Oh, I know what it might be. Hold on. Let's go this way. Okay, so here's an example of, uh, if you notice on the screen that says adjust, it'll say minus five, right? So what I did was I went out of coordination and now I'm trying to go back into coordination. So it's adjusting, so it's adding or subtracting time to my cycle length. And that's why I'm getting that extended cycle. So eventually when that gets back in step, that adjust will go to zero. And I'm gonna cover this when we go over to the troubleshooting and that portion of what we're doing. Okay. Go back into our coordination. Okay. Okay. So that's where we enter all our phase splits. So here's all our phase splits, right? We put those in there. So we got our cycle length, our phase splits, and we got our offset in there. So that's how we enter general coordination, right? It's not that hard. Um, it's all written out exactly the way I have it over here on your plans. So you can, if you have to replace a controller, it's not that hard to re-implement it. It's, it's, it's a big part of, coordination gets a bad rap for a number of different reasons. A lot of it is people just don't understand how it's working. They just know that they get a lot of complaints about it. Um, when the plan goes in, you gotta remember when coordination timing gets done, it's typically a year to two years before the cabinet gets deployed because that's when the plans came out. Um, we, so a lot of that coordination when it goes in probably needs to be fine-tuned you got to add some seconds here a business open a business closed um you know it's good when when intersections get turned on or deployed that they go they start out on free operation get them running on free operation make sure everything's working make sure your detection is working make sure your communication is working um, once you get to that part then we can turn on the coordination with the understanding that the design consultant or somebody from the town um basically can monitor this coordination and make sure that the timing is all accurate so um coordination is good it does work when it's in when it's designed and installed properly programmed properly we go out and we see a lot of things that just the plan is fine it just people made changes and, and that's why it doesn't work now um so so try, let's try to maintain our coordination as we go and and take advantage of it the one thing that i, I didn't cover is um so the SIC reference. So the SIC reference, basically what that is, is um, if you have a closed loop system, which is what most everybody is used to, basically you have a master controller and it's connected to a bunch of local controllers. So the master's at one intersection and then you have local controllers at four other intersections. It's connected over copper or fiber or wireless. <clears throat> and basically the master is keeping the time sync reference for all those other controls. So if I look at the master, even if the master time is off by an hour, they're all gonna be off by an hour, but they're all gonna be off by hour by to the second. So it's critical that we keep all the time clocks synced up together. So there's a couple of different ways we do that. If we have a master, the master does it for us. The one thing we have to do 
is make sure the master time stays accurate to regular time. We always reference um, US Navy time clock. That's what I reference a lot. So if you don't, if you have communication between all the controllers, it's easy to keep them all synced up together. If you don't, if you're doing a traditional time base, which means there's no communication, it's critical that we keep our clocks updated and synced, which we would do with our smartphone, the second hand, you, you set it the time, which I'll show you how to set the clocks to the second. Um, a lot of times the, the time clocks in the controllers will drift over time. So every couple of months, they'll drift a couple of seconds. And what that happens is why that becomes a problem with coordination is if the clocks drift unequally, so intersection one is off by 10 seconds, but intersection two is off by 15 seconds. Now my offset isn't going to balance between the two of them. I need them both to be set at the same exact time to the second. So that way, all my offsets are critical and my zero points for coordination are consistent along the core. One thing we do a lot is GPS. That's why we install GPS everywhere. So it's a lot cheaper to go stick a GPS antenna <clears throat> in a controller, maybe you get a, in a cabinet, maybe you're going to replace the controller than it is to install wireless radios, dig conduit up for a conduit, um, things of that nature. It all depends what you're trying to do. Um, if you have the funding, a, an infrastructure with conduits or wireless is definitely the way to go if your budget allows. But if you can't do it, GPS works fine. Um, a lot of times you'll see they'll do a project with three or four intersections. They'll all have conduit or wireless or whatever. And then there'll be one more intersection that maybe they couldn't get to, they, they couldn't do underground or whatever. They'll just GPS that one. So that way that clock will stay consistent with all the other ones. So that zero point is pretty critical. Um, that's what we want to, uh, to maintain with our coordination. So that's kind of the coordination in a nutshell. Um, the last two are just copy dial and splits so or low default. So hopefully that answers all your, uh, your general overview of coordination for now. Um, again, we're just trying to show you how to implement that, that data into the controller. All right, so one thing I noticed is we're running under manual. So we're gonna put, go over the time base now. So we'll grab a quick drink of water. All right. <clears throat> so we go into time base. So view current, very basic. That that looks like a um, one of the uh, one of the screens that we have in the uh, uh, the real time screen. It basically gives you the clock. You'll see where I'm off by the time because I'm going to show you how I reset it. <clears throat> if we go into set time and date, right? Basically, you'll see that the time the date we have is 9 15 20, the year 2020. Uh, three in the morning, 52 minutes and seven seconds. So we're going to, we always want to up for two reasons. When you go to a controller, you should try to make it habit to always update the time clock for two reasons. Um, if you're doing any time-based operation, you want that to be accurate to what's going on, whether you're just turning on max two on and off in the morning and the afternoon, maybe you're turning on recalls, uh, phase omits or coordination. It takes two seconds to do it. That way you're always current. So the way we do it is basically, so we're in May. So we're going to put in 05. Today is the 12th. And it's the 20th, but I'll just enter it. So now we get the date right. And now we'll put in the time. If I look at my clock here, where do I got this? I got 11, 02. Enter in about 12 seconds. Okay, that's all it was. We just enter it and enter. It. And you'll notice once I do the month, day, and year, and the time, the day automatically changes. So the way the days work is we we go from Sunday to Saturday sequentially one to seven. So Sunday is one, Tuesday is two. I'm Sunday is one, Monday is two, Wednesday is three. Sunday is one, Monday is two, Tuesday is three, in case that didn't come out right. So Tuesday is three. Um, this is daylight savings time, DST, so the beginning and end. Um, 
it used to it used to be four and one and eleven and three or something like that. But now we change it so we do the month and the week. So we do March. And then we do the month, which is November. Okay. So that's our daylight savings time routine that we do now. Basically, they shorten the winter for us. Maybe someday they'll do away with it completely. I would prefer they do away with it completely, but it is what it is. So basically, that's just doing daylight saving time. And then cycle zero, we make this 2400. And then STZ differential. So this is the the time zone differential from minute, minute Greenwich mean time. So when we do um, GPS, basically we got to offset the hours from Greenwich mean time. So we would do this in seconds, H. <clears throat> so you'll see East Greenwich mean time, 18,000, standard time, mountain time, Pacific time. So based on the four different time zones, this is what you would put in there. So 18,000 is Eastern Standard Time. That's what we put in there. Okay. All right. So now that we set our date and time, the other thing that's critical too is when we're troubleshooting um, and we go into the event logs, which I'll go into in, in a later class, it's, in, it's important that we get accurate. It gives a time and date stamp. So if our time and date is off in the controller, that's what it's going to stamp the error log, the error um, message in the log. So we want to make sure that that's accurate in case we ever have a problem. If we knew it went to flash last Thursday, we want to make sure that it has the accurate date and time of last Thursday, not last Monday, because then that just throws off the, what we're trying to accomplish in our troubleshooting. So a lot of times, I'll um, like I said, it's a good idea just to keep updating those clocks as you go to a controller. Uh, okay, so now we'll go put in our time events. So you just hit, they, I'll tell you, go and hit the event. So it'll basically come up, it'll say day three. We can change this, but we're just going to stay with day three. We just hit enter. Okay. This brings up our time-based traffic events. All right. You'll see it says the, the day, the hour, the month. Um, DL is the dial. SP is the, is the split and offset OF is the offset. And then you have P one through 16. That's our phase functions. So we have two things we can do in a controller. We can set phase functions or special functions. <clears throat> in the standard time clock, we do phase functions. In the aux time clock, we do special functions. And I'll get into those in a, in a little bit. So basically I wanted, so for this exercise, we'll turn our coordination on. So if I look over here on the screen, I put a standard time-based sequence, time-based chart that goes up there, right? You'll see it'll have the day. So S slash S means Saturday and Sunday. And then you'll see on the it'll say Monday dash F, Monday through Friday. So typically, they, a lot of times, they'll do coordination the same on Saturday and Sunday, and then the same on Monday through Friday. And I'll show how we can use something called equate the days so we don't have to enter it seven different times. Um, or sometimes they'll do they'll run Saturday and Sunday differently, but in our case, we're going to make Saturday and Sunday the same. And then you'll see this the cycle split and offset. <clears throat> so this says free. And then the time says 000. zero, zero. So basically that's midnight to midnight. So on the weekends, they want it running free. They don't want any coordination running on the weekend. During the week, they want to run cycle one, split one, offset one. It's to start at 0, 0600, which is six in the morning. And then they want it to go free at 10 o'clock. So basically our AM peak, 6 o'clock to 10 o'clock. Then it goes free all day. And then at then they want it to go cycle two at 1,500 or 3 in the afternoon. And then go free again at 1,900, which is 7 o'clock. So basically we're going to run coordination 6 to 10 and then 3 to 7. <clears throat> And, and the, this is how we enter times to do anything. It's all what we're, what functions we're doing with the times. So you'll notice where it says codes just below, and it'll say FL, which means flash, and it'll say DL slash SP5. 
So if I wanted this, this goes back to when we went over the, um, we went over how to put, do a nighttime flash, a soft flash. This is where we put the fives in. So I would put five, five, zero, and that would be, the, that would be my flash at that time. And then the free is offset four, so it's zero, zero, four, and I'll show you that in a minute. So if we want to add, you'll see you hit the one, and the cursor moves over. So we want to do the day. So remember, day one through seven. So we'll do Saturday and Sunday first. So we do zero, one. Where it says DD, put the zero, one. If you do one, it won't accept it, okay? Now the hours, right, we're going to go zero, 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 zero. And again, we want it to be free. So this is where we do free, free equals OF equals four. Four, enter. So now if you look at it, what that is telling me is day one at zero, 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 it goes free. The four represents free, okay? Okay. Now we want to add in our, so we basically just added in so we just added in this top line. Well, we did Sunday, we'll add the Saturday in. It's free from zero to zero to 24, okay? Now we wanna add in the Saturday, the Monday through Friday. So again, we're gonna do one for add. Now, you're, it, because we're limited with the lines, you actually write over what is already there and then it adds it in, so don't, don't think you're doing it wrong if it doesn't give you a space to do it. We're just writing over it, so keep track of what you're doing. So the day is going to be 0, 2, because that's Monday. And the hour is going to be 0, 6, or 6 o'clock. No minutes. And then we're going to run cycle 1, split 1, offset 1, and hit enter. Okay, so now it overwrote that, and it kept it in there. So now if I cycle down through what I got, You'll notice that I just had these two entries that just keep repeating themselves. <clears throat> okay. So we want to continue to build on this. So again, we're going to turn the coordination off. So I'm already at two, so I can just arrow over and I'm going to do 10 o'clock, 0, 0, 0, 0, 4. Enter. Okay. Now you'll see that on day two, 6 o'clock, 1, 1, 1 comes on. And then day two, 10 o'clock, we go to free. So we turned it on at six, we turned it off at 10. Now we'll add the, the PM peak. So again, we go one, the two's in there, we go 1500. This time we go 211. And then we're going to turn this off. So we go one, 1900, four, enter. Okay? So now if we toggle through, so on Sunday, we're free all day because we have zero, zero, we just have one function. And then Tuesday, so in some controllers, you used to have to put in, I'll add it for you right here. You used to have to go like this. So some controllers used to make you do the free go to free in the time clock at midnight. So basically saying you're free at midnight till six in the morning when you go to coordination. In the EPAC, you don't have to do that. <clears throat> it automatically knows if you don't tell me to do something, I'm going to be in free. So I'm going to now show you if you look in the if you look in the code and you look in the overwrites, if you notice there's one for two and three for delete. If I want to delete this, I just hit two enter and that deletes it right out so I, I took that whole line right out of this that's a way to delete that um so does that mean he hung up yeah okay hold on a second oh you put me in a hole okay um okay so at, at six o'clock we have one 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 ten o'clock we go free three o'clock we go two one one 1700 1900 which is seven o'clock we go free again okay so that we have it in there for sunday and monday now how do we get it in for the rest of the week without having to redo this every single day so we hit the f twice and we go to number six which is called equate and transfer okay so if you look on the code it'll say equator transfer we're going to do zero for equate and enter 
And then I want to go from and to. So I want to go from day one, enter, to day seven, enter. So day one being Sunday, day seven being Saturday. So basically what I did was I just equated it and took all that time and dumped it into Saturday. So if I go back to my events, you'll see that now I have a, a seven for Saturday and the one for Sunday. <clears throat> okay, we'll go back and do it for the, um, for the weekday. So we go zero, enter, two, enter. Now we'll do the rest of the days of the week. So we go three, enter, four, enter, five, enter, six, enter. Okay, so now we just basically copied or equated all the data to the rest of the days of the week. We go back to the event log, hit enter. Now, it, the clock will always start on the day of the week if you have something in there. So we're in day three, so day three comes up. And you notice that we have day three, day four, day five, day six, it all looks like day two, and then seven and one. So we just put in a time-based program. So we just put in this time-based program for the coordination the way it is on the plane. So it takes a little bit of practice, not that hard, kind of easy to follow. Um, all right. So now if I go to coordination, now that I have a time plan and if I go to auto, right, you'll notice it says backup free. So backup free means that I have a time plan. I have a time-based program in there to turn it on, but I'm in free operation because it is 11.14 in the morning. And at 11.14, we're supposed to be running in free operation. OK, so just to see how that coincides with each other, if we were on a if we were on a network system where it says backup, it would say system. <clears throat> but because this is isolated, we're running time based. It just says backup. We're not connected to a master or anything. All right, we'll go back into the time base. Um, so. Phase function mapping. So this is where we can turn on things like max two, which is a big one. Um, so if I'll just scroll down, you have max two, you have phase omits, um, pet omits, um, max recall, min recall. I can have all this stuff come on time of day, right? Let's go back to the, there's a lot of them going back to max two, okay. So this is the default where you see that it's all turned on. So let's say I want to turn on, um, just to give you an example, a common one is I want to turn on max two. So you'll notice where it says P function name and then to the right, it's one through 16, right? So I got two options of doing this, right? I can either do, just hang up the phone. I think he, go, I think he puts me on hold because he's talking to somebody. So anyway, um, Basically what this is doing is I got two ways I can do this. So the old way you'd see in the old legacy controllers is you would, I go into phase functions and there'll be a one under every phase that I wanted to do max two on. So if I was doing eight phases right here, I would have one under one through eight and I'll show you that. And it would, you'd turn them all on and then turn them all off. An easy way to do it is, like I said, it doesn't really matter, is I can go change these. I'm just gonna do the top four. And I can only turn on one phase function. Instead of turning on all eight, I can just have to turn on one phase function. So if I go back to my clocks, I go to my traffic events, I could do, we'll just do day three. So let's say day three at 11.15. Right. I want to turn on phase function one. Right. 
If you'll notice down below, where my, you'll see where right now on the bottom left, it says max two. But I'm only timing max two in phases one, two, three, and four. If you notice five, six, seven, and eight, I'm timing max one. <clears throat> so that's just, I'm just demonstrating a way where you can turn on basically one phase function to do many, to do multiple phases, as opposed to turning on all one through four. So it's optional, you can do it either way that you want. Um, and then to turn it off, I would just go one, and I would go 11.30, eight out. So basically see how it goes on and off. So then 11.30, whenever 11.30 comes in, another 10 minutes, that'll go back down to phase one. I mean, that'll go back down to max max one. So. So that's that's how we just input and output, uh, turn on and off some of the phase functions in the uh, in the traffic events. We'll F out of the air. So now, besides traffic events, we have something also called aux events. So it looks exactly the same, right? It comes up as day three. So we pull it up. You notice there's a lot less information here, right? You'll notice that we have we still have the date, the hour, and the minute. But then we have three aux events, three detection events, a function called dimming, and then we have eight special functions. So we can turn on up to we can turn on and off up to eight special functions. So these are just additional functions in the controller um, on that are outside of any type of phase functions. Phases, phase functions are specific to phases: max recall, min recall, um, omits, things like that. Special functions are things that happen maybe globally in a controller. And I'll give you a couple of examples when I go over to there. Um, so if I come back out and we go zero, so it kind of sets up the same. So you'll see the, the special functions. So this would, be, this would be somewhere where we would turn on, bear with me, phase banks. So if you remember from the first class, we talked about something called phase banks. And this is where we would be able to turn a phase bank on and off through the special function. So we would set it up the same way. <clears throat> and this is where we would do the phase banks to run typically at this point, we're running mostly using phase banks for um, max three or max four timing as required. So this is where we would turn a phase bank on. So we would put a one over here, right? And then, and then come back and go on our aux event. The one. And same thing. I would turn it on there. And if you notice where it says in the middle of the screen, where it says ring timers, AS colon zero zero, and it says B colon, now you'll notice it says two one one because I'm running phase bank two. Okay. So basically it's just. Um, phase functions get turned on on the time clock. Special functions get turned on the aux time clock. So it's just two different places to turn on separate functionalities. So let me get rid of this because I don't want phase bank two to be on. Um, so again, I go to enter and we'll get rid of that. So that should go back to phase bank one here in a minute. Uh, let me go take that out. All right, so I took the phase bank out. Now you look at the middle, ring timers, AS colon zero zero, you'll see banks one, one, one. So that's basically where we turn phase banks. So phase function mapping goes with traffic events, Special function mapping goes with aux events, okay? There's one other uh, event schedule that you can have, and that's called your time of year events. <laughs> so time of year events are specific to every year. So typically we tie these around holidays. So if you wanted um, a certain event, let's say you have a parade on the 4th of July and you wanted all the signals to do something or something to happen, this is where we could turn it on in here um, you could set it up for all your Monday holidays, 
Um, a lot of times we'll see a schedule where they do all your Monday holidays, 4th of July, Christmas, New Year's Eve, <clears throat> and you can go in and basically some dates are exactly the same. So 4th of July, Christmas, those fall on the same exact dates. It just varies by the day of the year it changes. And then you have other ones like Thanksgiving that is always the fourth Thursday. And so it kind of you set it up like that. So if you're interested in doing time of year events, I, I'll get with you off to the side. It gets a little involved. I don't want to confuse this with, with the other two. I'd rather make sure that you understand how the other two work um, because time of year events gets used very infrequently. But I just want to let you know that it is here if there's ever a need for it. Um, and then in, in some of the in some of the bait in some of those spots, um, you can actually clear out. So you don't have to de like I say, default the whole controller. You can actually go in and clear events. So you just hit the number, enter, and that'll clear it all out. So that way, if, if you if you made a mistake or you got confused, there's the ability to just clear out one section and not the whole thing. Um, but that kind of sums up the um, that kind of sums up uh, the time base. Let me go back in here. Uh, let me take some stuff out. Three, nope, I want three. Oh, the other one too is is edit. So if if I just wanna let's say I just put the wrong time in, I could hit three. And then just make that 45. So I didn't take the whole thing out. I just edited it. <clears throat> but right now, I am going to delete that one. And then go down. I'm going to delete that one. All right. So I'm in the free operation. So if I delete this one, like that. All right. So if you notice I deleted that. So now what my controller is doing, and this is where you, this is an example of how you can get in a little bit of trouble with coordination. So I'm running, I'm running cycle one one one. I'm starting at six in the morning and I'm running it till three o'clock, where I'm changing to two. So I'm never going to free in the the late morning or the midday. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just that you have to make sure your cycle like there really accommodates the amount of traffic that you have, or you can run into problems. So, uh, okay, so let's go back. Back into my coordination. All right, here, so. Da, 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 da. All right. So we're back in. Um, so back on the coordination. So um, all right. Um, I don't know if anybody has any questions. I know that's a lot to take in uh, the coordination and the time base. I just kind of wanted to go over. Um, Everything that was, you know, basically, again, it's, it's a programming class. It's how to get the, the data out of another controller, off a set of plans, into the controller properly and effectively so you can keep using it that way. So many times controllers go down and, they again, they get put back in and they get unit data, phase of data, and they get nothing else put in it. Um, this class is, is to try to encourage you guys to keep programming, to reprogram coordination, reprogram time base, and then we'll, we'll get to the uh, preemption. And basically, you know, let's get all the program back in the controller, essentially. You guys should know how to do this. Um, don't be afraid of it. It takes a little bit of practice, but then you can definitely do it. So let's see what's going on here. So, we're still at that 115. That's a little puzzling to me. Let's look into that a little bit. Um, All right. Dun -dun -dun. Bear with me one second. All right. 
Um, all right. Well, it's it's eleven thirty. Um, we kind of caught back up to where I wanted to be with the classes. Um, I don't know if anybody has anything else. Has any more questions? Um, I just want to cover those two things for today. Uh, I don't see any questions coming in or any questions on the thing, Wayne. Um, I think we're going to leave it here. Guys, get a little half get get to go a little half hour early. And it's a nice day out. I'm sure a lot of people. We, like I said, we get that probably more like a dozen people logged in. Um, again, I'll send the video out. The, the recording of the video has been working well. Um, hopefully, you guys are reviewing this stuff. Um, like yeah, I keep saying it'll, it'll be on the website. The website's almost done. We have a meeting with the the website designer this week, so hopefully, we can get that thing launched and uh, and it'll be up there. We'll, we might start doing some uh, product trainings as well. Um, we'll have those on there. One thing I'm going to do today since we get done early is, and somebody else suggested this, so I think I can probably do this, is I'm going to make a couple of quick videos um, with the TS1 and the TS2 cabinet stuff. I have a TS2 cabinet, so I'll get a video and just kind of go over the components um, just to kind of get you guys up to speed so you know exactly a better understanding by physically seeing the cabinets themselves. I don't have a TS1 cabinet here, so I'll have to take the show on the road, as they say. And uh, I know there's some around the office that I can go look at, but um, I'll get I'll get you a couple of, you know, short 10, 15 minute videos and, and send them over. Just basically explaining the TS1 and the TS2 cabinets and what they look like. So you kind of have a better understanding of what I was talking about. Um, all right. If uh, if nobody has any more questions, we'll uh, we'll Cut it short, 11:30, um, because we're back to where basically um, next week we can get into. Uh, we'll probably do preemption, and then we'll start going over the reports and some troubleshooting, because that'll probably and that'll be the fourth class, so it'll work out well. Um, all right, if nobody has any more questions, again, I appreciate all your time. Hope you guys got something out of it. Hit me up with questions if you. All right, guys, have a good weekend. Be safe. We'll talk to you.